Hi. So if you go under assignments and you go to project seven, you'll see that I've got a couple of things for y'all to do. And the way it's set up is kind of like a checklist. There's step one, step two, step three, and it goes in that order. So here I have this and you can read it in your own time, but it sort of explains where I'm going with all of this and the thoughts that I'm having during this current time. And that leads to this movie that we're going to watch in four different parts called Advertising at the Edge of the Apocalypse. So I've got part one there, it's a YouTube link for you. Um, following that, you're going to go into the discussions. There's a discussion board made specifically for our conversation surrounding this movie. And that's just going to be on the discussion boards right here. Um, then you're going to watch the video lecture that you're currently watching right now. And that's going to be right here. I'm going to send it to your messages as well. It's not there yet because we're making it right now. And then there's this really good video on how to make logos because that's going to be the topic of this lecture and also the project that you all create. So it's a really good video. It's about 15 minutes. You can watch that. And you can look on Project 7 Discussion Board for examples, both student examples and non. And then you're going to do Project 7, which is choosing your own client. Um, you're going to choose your own corporate client. So this can be Apple, Chanel, Beats, um, anyone you can think of that has a very well-established national or global um, corporate identity. And then in Illustrator, you're going to design your logo for this client. We're very much building off our last project in terms of technical skills. So you're doing, you know, the text tool, you're coloring it, you're manipulating the text however you see fit. Um, you're playing with different fonts. Since we don't have access to Suitcase Fusion or Universal Type Client, I recommend dafont.com, D-A-F-O-N-T.com. Um, so you could do that, download it, install the font. It's really easy, and you can use that in Illustrator. So this one, this is a step that um, I want to go over again, even though we went over it on the last project, and that's how to export your JPEG at the maximum quality. So if some of you are getting sort of a fuzzy JPEG, um, whenever you post it to the discussion board, that's most likely to do with this stage of the process. So you're going to do that on the discussion board and you're going to turn in your Illustrator file to me on this page right here with submit assignment and then upload it from there. So here's our rubric and you can kind of go through that checklist and some of these will make more sense after I explain exactly what I'm looking for in a logo, what makes the logo successful. Uh, you can go into this checklist and make sure the logo that you design meets all of these requirements. Okay, so I'm going to go to the discussion board and I'm going to go to type only logo. And so these are examples, but I'm also going to use these to talk about what makes a logo successful, what makes a logo great. And you can see here I've got a lot of really I iconic logos. So I've got, you know, CNN, Google, you can see the progression of eBay, how it used to be before it got rebranded and how it is now. Um, same with Amazon. You can see this very interesting transition from the 90s, mid 90s, all the way till today. And all these choices that they've made. Um, so I think right here is a really good place for me to stop and talk about what makes a logo successful and also what is its purpose. So I'll start with the purpose. The purpose of a logo is very large part brand identity. 
Um, you want it to increase brand recognition over time. So even if it's just a symbol or a letter, you still want over time and within culture for someone to be able to look at it and know exactly what that brand is and have all the associations with that brand as well. Um, so you want people to be able to like rely on the quality associated with that trademark. Um, it's also sort of a shorthand for who you are, right? It's going to appear on a letterhead, it's going to appear on packaging, employee uniforms, newsletters, um, the side of a truck, so on and so forth. So in order for it to be successful and to fill its purpose of brand recognition, brand recognition over time, sort of just standing for something, um, hopefully something that excites people. So in order for all these things to happen, you need your logo to be one of four things, or four of four things, actually, in the end. You want it to be simple. And so if you recall at the beginning of the semester, I had all of you design a logo and you got to pick your client. And something I always notice when students first design their logo is how um, not simple it is, right? They try to make it complex, make it um, sort of layered and its meanings and all this stuff. And that's really, really great thinking in those ways. But in terms of logos, you want it to just be really simple and really instant. Um, it's easier to remember that way. It's easier to recognize, especially when you're in an environment where you've got all these different logos coming at you, all these different advertisements coming at you. Um, you want something that's going to stand out in that competitive visual environment. So another thing you want is scalability. So like I said, it's going to be on letterheads, it's going to be on the side of the truck. You want it to be just as recognizable on a letterhead as it is blown up on the side of the truck, as it is shrunk down to a logo on a shirt. So scalability is really important. Um, that's another thing. It kind of goes hand in hand with simplicity. Like if it's too complex, if there's too much like line work or shading, all of that really gets lost as you scale down. Um, another thing you wanted to do is have some sort of, you wanted to communicate the corporation, the organization, the small business, whatever you're designing for, you wanted to communicate what they're about. And that has everything to do with what we've been talking about so far in this class of how do letter forms communicate, you know, having something sharp, something sturdy versus something soft versus something friendly and inviting. You really want to think about that when you're doing logos because you are instantly communicating who you are and what you are about with a logo. So you want it to be communicating according to a very intentional message. And so if we sort of look at, at some of these, you can see that with these choices that are being made, um, we'll take eBay for example, they sort of chose something eclectic, right? Something childlike as well that's happening with the colors, but eclectic, like lots of different letters saying, you know, we have a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of everything. And so once they rebranded, you can see that shift in communication is really, really clear. They go from something that looks frankly unprofessional, I'll say, I think this looks very unprofessional, to something that looks a little more mainstream, a little more dependable, trustful, right? You're buying things from someone on the internet that you don't know. So maybe they want to communicate a little bit more that it's something you can trust. It looks like everything else. Um, yeah, and a little more sophisticated as well. So, so that's happening here in the rebranding, that, that shift in communication that has everything to do with letter form, 
everything to do with placement of that letter form, how you manipulate the letters, all of that good stuff. Um, that brings me to color as well. So color is a huge topic um, in this free screen lecture service. I only have 15 minutes. So I'll just say that there's a whole class that I do teach on color alone. But there's a few just like basic underlying um, cultural phenomenons when it comes to color and what that communicates, right? So red, you think drama, highly visible, um, sexuality, aggression, uh, violence, passion. So we find this a lot of like sports teams, sports cars, etc. cetera. Um, blue. And it's darker values, it has a sense of authority to it. So um, no wonder Chase uses blue, right? It's got authority, it's um, got sort of like an honesty and a cleanliness. So whether or not that's actually the case with your company and your values, maybe they want you to think it's the case. So blue would be something that sort of stands for that trustability, loyalty, accountability. It's also really calming if it's not in its full intensity. Um, so there's like a cleanliness. I think I already said that. And yellow, let's see if I can find a yellow. I'll just stick with Google. Um, so culturally in the past, it was associated with cowardliness, um, like yellow belly coward, I don't know that phrase. Um, but cultural associations do change over time. And, you know, these days it's associated with happiness, um, maybe even peace, peace of mind in some cases, if it's used in the right way. Um, warmth, optimism, all that good stuff. Uh, green is a pretty obvious one. It's the environment, it's clean, it's natural. Whether or not that's really your values, you can sort of communicate that to someone because we're just so culturally inundated to read things in those ways. Um, you know, it, it's a benefit, it's like a visual association with the environment. Um, I will interject a disclaimer, if you can call it that, and say that these associations are different across cultures, which is really interesting. So um, let's see, where was my really fun fact? People in India wear white to a funeral, where we wear black, like just something as, as basic as that. Um, people in India wear wet, red to their weddings, um, whereas in America, it's traditionally white. So things like that, like all these meanings are very culturally specific in some ways. Some of them do go across cultures, like red, it's just the color of blood, we all have it. Um, so it has that sense of like, I don't know, aggression, urgency, maybe violence, um, passion. So that's a really quick crash course in all of that. But I do want y'all to just go through all of these and try to understand like, what are these different choices communicating to you? Um, you can see that in Sony, like these rebrandings are so subtle, right? They go from really skinny and then they bulk up and go back to skinny again. And it's just like, they're really fine tuning that visual communication whenever they do that. Um, okay, so really, really quick, as I have a minute left, we're in Illustrator, right? Um, I'm gonna create new, new document. I'm gonna make it eight and a half by 11. I'm gonna click create. I'm gonna exit out of this. All my tools are here on the left. If ever you can't see it, um, go up to window. Oops, go up to window at the very top. You can't see it on mine, but then go to workspace, reset essentials. Okay, so you've got your text tool here, and I'll just do CNN because I'm freaking out because we have like one minute left. Um, 
So I'll do all my things to it, right? My characters, all of this stuff. And it, again, 